Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I continue to test uh, SR-72 slash Darkstar. I have done a lot of testing since the previous video and so we are close to getting it but I haven't actually gotten it through to... I'm aiming for Mach 7 first. Uh, we have not gotten it there yet. I have gotten it past Mach 3. Uh, but it is the transition between the regular jet mode and the scramjet mode that uh, we still need to test. And once it's safely in the scramjet mode and can actually accelerate like that, then we'll be in good shape, of course. But a lot of things had to change beforehand. Uh, the engines have many parameters, and one of them is how much thrust they deliver depending on the speed that they're already going at. Another one is how much thrust they deliver based on how much atmosphere there is, where in the atmosphere it's at, how much atmospheric density the intake is sucking in. Another uh, parameter is how much, how efficient the air intake is at different altitudes. And so all these things are coming into play. And when it says like max thrust 630 kilonewtons at Mach 3.2 here, it doesn't deliver that. <laughs> it is, it's complicated. This is all complicated. Of course, this is a specific impulse as well. That's a separate issue. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's weird. One weird thing was that I found out that you can't have it start out with zero thrust at the surface. I was trying to have the scrap jet start out with just zero thrust at the surface. You can't. Uh, it'll just be outside of parameters or whatever. It'll never actually be able to light. So we have to give it some token thrust at sea level and then add a multiplier. Right now the multiplier claims that it gets a max thrust of 2,000 kilonewtons at Mach 7. I don't think it's got to be anywhere near that, but we haven't gotten to Mach 7 to find out yet. So mainly I've been trying to figure out how to get the right amount of thrust at Mach 3, right? Uh, that's where the transition is. A whole other business that I didn't anticipate is when we transition from one mode to the other, there it starts, basically it's like the engine starting up again. And that takes a long time with jet engines, with realism overhaul. And as a result, we just lose so much speed that there's just a lot of drag that hits us. And by the time it starts up, it can't produce any thrust. So I had to reduce the amount of time it takes for it to spool up by like a lot. I mean, basically, now it happens instantaneously or close to it. So that's good, but that had to be done. We had to figure that out. So there's been a whole lot of business. I also changed the plumes to real plumes. I added more thrust vectors in order to simulate a more planar thrust than a sort of cylindrical thrust, I guess you could say. You'll see what I mean. So that doesn't actually change the thrust of anything. It's just how many little thrust transforms there are. But these are slightly vectoring engines. They do have a sort of gimbal. It'd be like sort of little plates inside the scramjet moving them about. But I don't know if that's super realistic. It can also throw things off sometimes, I found out. So we have to be gentle with it. Uh, it definitely needs to be handled properly in yaw. Yaw can go really badly off. So anyway, we should be able to get to the transition speed and altitude. The question is whether the transition is going to happen properly. So here we are again with Clausen, who has uh, perished many times actually, but does not know that at this point. But here we go. Oh, 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 we have asymmetry. Oh, hold on, hold on. Is it in the wrong mode? Oh, this one's in the wrong mode for some reason. So I have to make sure to put this back on mode one. Otherwise, it clearly does not have enough thrust, which is good. We we don't want it to have thrust in scramjet mode at sea level when it's not moving. It does have a little. I can't avoid that, unfortunately. Okay, here we go again. Now we should be okay. So this is how the plume looks now. And one thing that was throwing me off last time was the fact that the thrust does vector means that if we're not careful we can take off before we're actually ready to take off. I still don't know why there are two airflow things here. 
and what complication that might suggest there is. So now we technically have more thrust than the indicated thrust. It was supposed to be 210 kilonewtons each and now we have a little bit more than that. And we are going to try and accelerate here more. Well, we really got more than 300 kilonewtons worth of thrust. Well, we're doing pretty well. It's sort of like the rapier engine in stock. But now we have high dynamic pressure, so we should go up a bit more. In Flight Sim, we basically used half of our jet fuel, the kerosene, in order to get up to speed in order to activate the scramjet, so I'm looking for basically the same idea with this. Well, we'll flatten out here. Thrust has gone down again. I don't think it got anywhere near what it was saying in the VAB. Basically a little above 300 kilonewtons is what it was able to do. Yep, thrust is going up again as we gain speed, of course. Of course, more fuel is being used as we gain speed as well, because we're getting more oxygen, we need more fuel to mix with it. So you can see the mass flow is increasing too, in order to produce the thrust. It's not coming for nothing. And we are at Mach 3.2. But now it's going down again because there's an optimal. The optimal is Mach 3.2 for these engines uh, in this mode, of course. I wanted it to be like the other ones, and so it'll peak out at a certain amount. Maybe I should push it up a little bit. I think the transition was at Mach 3.7 or so, and it maxed out Mach. Mach 4.0. This is maxing out a little bit too soon. But alright, Mach 3.4 and let's see how it does when I transition to scramjet. And right there you saw the drop. And it seems like our two engines are different. Now this one, the prop requirement med is low. It seems like the air intake is low, but the 108 kilonewtons is obviously not good enough either. The big vertical stabilizers are holding us despite the disparity in thrust, but we're not accelerating. So we're going to need to get some more air somehow. Maybe I'll bump up the specific impulse. Let's just have the specific impulse be the same in both modes. That'll cut down on how much oxygen it needs, I think. But we got to transition, we just aren't getting any benefit from it right now. Okay, well, let me make some changes and I'll be back with another flight. Okay, changes have been made and we are gonna try again. Atmospheric autopilot on, throttle up, and ignition. Same basic idea at the start, of course. Okay, turn complete. And we are now going to accelerate. And still go up, of course. Well, we're accelerate accelerating well enough in this mode. Maybe I should just have one mode. <laughs> It'd be a lot simpler. So much nicer in this mode. But we do need it to use two different fuels, so that's the rub. I haven't really changed this mode at all. We'll just take the Mach 3.4 and hope that this time we're gonna get better performance. In the scramjet mode. Okay, switching. Well, we do get better performance, but we still have a air intake imbalance between the two sides. Uh, we're not really getting that much better performance, actually. It was very puzzling. Could have sworn I increased how much air we were getting, 
so that we would have the prop requirements filled. Let me switch mode again. Ooh, ooh. Switching mode from that mode to the other mode does not seem to work very well, does it? Oh dear. That was quick. Okay. Well, I don't know exactly how to fix this. I'll see what I can try. Okay, I've made some changes and I've skipped the preamble. We are once again on our way to Mach 3 here. This time with Gregney, I actually had brought Clausen out to the runway and then decided to quit the game and make a few more changes. And in the process, we recovered Clausen and sent Gregney out. So a bit of a switch of crew. And yep, Mach 1.5 now. And I tried a lot of things we'll see, including just increasing how much intake atmosphere is listed here. It is 8 right now. I don't know if that makes any difference whatsoever, but who knows. And tweaked some numbers, but and also tweaked the regular jet version numbers to uh, try and get it to a higher velocity before we switch over. But yeah, it's all a question mark as far as I'm concerned. If we can do this right. I don't know why it's not getting enough intake air in one engine in particular. Okay, Mach 3. Maybe we should climb higher once we hit the top Mach number. Well, we're past Mach 3.4 now. Let's go up a bit. See how high we can get while still maintaining the Mach number. You can see how quickly the thrust goes down though. Okay, 3.6 is basically where we're at. The actual speed is going up still. I'll try and switch over at 25 kilometer altitude. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, nuts, I didn't have it action grouped. Okay, because I switched the engines, I made sure to put on the new ones just in case, otherwise the effects wouldn't take, so, but I forgot to action group them. Okay, now... At Mach 3.63 and 25 kilometers. Alright, switch. 110 kilonewtons. We are accelerating, but we were going down just then. Let's see. We're still going down. <laughs> uh, it's borderline right now. They both have their... Uh, Prop requirement met though. They're balanced right now, so that's good. That little hiccup when it switches modes though is not great. It does take a while in Flight Sim for it to really rev up, so I guess it is okay. We'll see. But we are, well, we're leveling off now, but maybe we should go down a bit. I don't know. Maybe just a little bit more. Would be nice. Do you suppose actually increasing the intake a a amount there, the intake atmosphere amount, actually made a difference? We can go down until we hit that high dynamic pressure warning. Ah, uh, well, there it is. Well, I think there's two borderlines still. I'll try and make some more tweaks, but it's encouraging. At least we seem to have the intake situation improved. So we'll work with that. It seems like in this situation, the stage time is 26 minutes. So the efficiency doesn't seem too different from what we had in Flight Sim. We just need to shift around the thrust a little bit. 
So let me make those tweaks and I will try again. Okay, what can I say? We are back at it again. We are past Mach 2, past 15 kilometers in altitude. And this time we are with Clausen Kerman. I have had some trouble with one engine going out on me. That has been another persistent issue that I don't quite understand, but hopefully it will not go this time. Okay, pass Mach 3. Alright, Mach 3.6 and 25 kilometers. We're still accelerating, so I'll let it go for a bit. Alright, 26 kilometers, 1100 meters per second. Switching modes. This time I made it a lot quicker. Um, we seem to have an imbalance in thrust though. That's weird. Um, uh, but, but uh, I guess they did not both switch modes. Okay, which one are you? <laughs> that did not switch modes. Okay, now they've both switched modes. We are still going up. And we're still accelerating, but can we accelerate enough? A long way from Cape Canaveral. But we are going down right now, Mach 3.8. I'll see if it can catch itself. We are pointing up. We've got angle of attack, so hopefully the vertical speed... Well, it seems to be moderating here. Hopefully it'll start going up again. might have to reduce how much impact the atmospheric density has. We're at only 3% now. Mach 3.9. Well, it's having trouble getting any faster right now. We're at Mach 4 now, but we are going down pretty substantially. Let me try and pull up. Uh, it's still very marginal, it seems. Yeah, only providing 116 kilonewtons right now. I still don't quite understand exactly what limits it. If you take a look at the number in the VAB, it'll look stupendous. Or the SPH, I mean. Uh, let's go to there. I don't think we're gonna get it past Mach 4 very easily here. Yeah, I mean, if we actually take a look at this, you know, it never gets to 654 kilonewtons. And in mode 2, 2,800 kilonewtons. Yeah, right. We are nowhere near that, of course. Um, we seem to have maybe 120 at best. Of course, that's at Mach 7, but the, the curve that I wrote into the configuration was nowhere near that dramatic. It's not like at Mach 7 we get 28 times the thrust that we do at Mach 4. So I continue to be a little bit befuddled and I'm just throwing darts at things. Um, again, this is also realism overhaul, so there are peculiarities. In fact, it it's the, a realism overhaul style hybrid engine configuration that I'm using in order to configure these, so it's not a stock module. So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure that out. But, well, we have improvement, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Mach 4 so far. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.